our sauce, mix that in, and the last part of that will be some Grand Marnier. We're going to add the Grand Marnier. And then we'll put it on the stove for 12 minutes and that's it. Very simple. This recipe is really nice. It's from the head chef of France and it's called a salad bouquet. And what it is, it's a small miniature bouquet for each person at the dining experience. As they come in to your party, each one will have their own little miniature display. And it may really makes a nice presentation. First thing we're going to do is each person is going to have to have one tomato for each portion. And as we go to start it off, we're going to need to cut the bottom of the tomato to make it level. And then after that, because it's going to sit on the plate like this, when you get done, you're going to start to cut it as if you were cutting, carving a pumpkin in that respect. And so you do it a little bit of an angle because you want to make sure that you're allowing for enough room for your lettuce to go inside. After you finish with your lettuce, getting ready for your lettuce, you're going to be pressing this in and get rid of any excess juices or whatever. You're going to take some leaf lettuce, which is nice and curly, and you're going to actually press it into the tomato. And you have to use a little bit of force. Make sure it's not too tall because you want it to look like a bouquet and you don't want it to fall apart. So after we've finished with that, I'm going to put one more piece here. Then we're going to present it onto the plate and look how nice that looks. When we get done, we're going to put some edible flowers you can go like this or put some herbs. And along the bottom of the plate, we're going to put some cut up vegetables, whatever you like. Nice coloration would be good. And this is some cucumber. So we just use the top part of the tomato that we had cut up already to do that. And this is how your presentation looks. Now Mike's going to be making the salad dressing for it, which is a traditional vinaigrette. And as he gets started, then he's going to finish and drizzle us up and get us ready to go for our party. The first thing that he's going to do is he's going to take a whole head of garlic and cut it in half. You know this is the fruit of the god. That's his favorite vegetable. He, he would put garlic on everything if he could. He's going to take that and scrub the bowl, which is a really neat technique that they use in Europe. A lot of European people have bowls that they scrub them faithfully every day with their garlic. And what it does is it adds a little bit of flavor without too much. Then he's going to sprinkle that with some sea salt, which is really a nice flavoring. The first thing he's going to add in is one part of balsamic vinegar. Now, if you can't afford balsamic vinegar, you can use apple cider vinegar, which is really nice. Then he's going to use three parts of olive oil. Now, we prefer the extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed. But again, a lot of people ask me questions about whether or not um, different kinds of oils are important. In this case, what happens is, for your salad, the flavor will be really true. So you want to have the dressing, the most expensive oil that you can afford. So in other words, if you can only afford olive oil, that would be great. But if you can afford the extra one, it'll work. Now, I would never suggest for you to do that when you used uh, olive oil like for baking and things like that. It just gets buried. But with what he's doing here, you're going to really taste a nice flavor. And the last touch for a French vinaigrette is a little bit of grainy mustard. Now he's going to put that in, finish mixing it up. That kind of makes it into an emulsion. And we're going to use that to dress our salad. Now the salad won't be dressed until the last minute of the party, remember. But as he goes through, he's going to finish the, I'll let you come over here. He's going to bring the salad dressing over and he's going to drizzle that. And you don't want to do that until the last minute. This is the kind of recipe where you can prepare the actual salad a little bit in advance, but you don't want to put the dressing on it until the last minute because it'll make it wilt. Isn't that beautiful? 
It's great. And it makes a really nice centerpiece. Now we're getting ready to do our pomme de chasse. The neat thing about the pomme de chasse is it's a special type of a potato. You can either bake it in a small piped decorative form or you could put it into um, a particular cocotte dish, they call it, or casserole, and bake it and it tastes really good. It's extra rich. It's like a baked potato, but it's a little interesting. So the first thing he's going to do is going to start off with two pounds of already mashed potatoes. As you can see, he has these ready to go. Now, the next part of the recipe is he's going to add in two eggs. And what the eggs do is they enrich the flavor by adding extra fat content from the egg yolk. And that's what's going to give you that really good mouth feel that people talk about, like when they eat ice cream. So as he gets these eggs incorporated into the mixture, he'll then start to add his seasoning. And the first seasoning that he's going to be adding is naturally salt. Then after that, he's going to go ahead and add in white pepper. And the reason why we're using white pepper is because of the fact that black pepper would make it discolored because it's a light product. And thirdly, he's going to be adding in nutmeg. Now, nutmeg is the key ingredient here. This is what makes the secret of pomme de chasse. And the pomme de chasse are really a fabulous taste. Most people won't understand what it is. They're tasting something a little different, but they would never guess that there's nutmeg in it. So Mike's now going to be taking that over to Chris, who is going to be doing the piping for us. And I think Chris is waiting for Mike right now. Now we're going to plate up our dinner. And this is a really neat product. What we're going to do is we're going to put our duck here. And again, don't forget, we can use chicken if you like. We're going to center that and see what that looks like. And then when Chris brings me the pomme de chasse, the little decorative ones, we're going to set those around the outside. Chris, do you have my? He's got them. OK, and I need my spatula. Thank you. Now we're going to put these on the outside rim. But again, you can also take the pomme de chasse can be baked in a casserole type thing, and they taste just as nice. Then after that, Mike's going to take that away and give me the green beans, which the apprentice has already sauteed for us, and they're ready to go. And we're going to put them in what I call the little firewood stack method. And it looks like little stacks of wood. And this is like very typical in French cooking or European cooking, is they put things in little stacks. And it looks really kind of elegant, and yet really informal. So after we get finished with these, then I'm going to go ahead and pour the sauce that we made earlier onto the plate. Because we're going to be flambéing this. And if you've never seen flambé, you're about ready to see it. We're getting ready to flambé. And really, this is more a matter of showmanship than it is flavor. Even the highest chefs will tell you the same thing. But the neat thing about it is you can either do it by bringing your guests into the kitchen and having them see the display, or you could actually flambé it at the table or flambé it and kick it to the table. So what we're going to use is we're going to use some high-powered rum. And this is another story. A lot of chefs say, oh, well, you can't use too much rum or whatever. You have to be careful not to use too much. But also, I will tell you, most of the wording labels say that rum is not supposed to be used for flambé at all. So you can use it at your own discretion. But today, we're going to use some high-powered stuff. So we're going to get ready to, one of the things that we have to do is drizzle this and get it hot. Most of the rums have to be heated. Now, if you didn't have a high-powered rum, then you would want to heat it over and over until we got it ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a platter like this, which is the one that I usually use for flambéing technique. And as you can see, it's already ignited. It hasn't taken any time at all. And look at how fabulous that looks. And again, it's nice and festive. If you had a nice, dark room that you're doing it in, it looks really wonderful. 
and everybody thinks you're a genius. So that's flambe. Well, the duck is cooked now, so what about dessert? Oh, you know, I forgot about that. Well, but you know what? We can always put something together really quick. Um, we have bananas here. Let's see, what can we do with some bananas? Uh, we could do a banana foster. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Well, do you have any ingredients over there I can use? I'm going to need some um, butter, some brown sugar. We've got bananas. Those are all ingredients you'd have right away at home. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to take a banana, cut it in half. We'll do just for two. And you're going to peel these out. Do you have a pan for me? Okay, we're going to go ahead and put some butter in the container and our bananas. And we're going to lay them flat. It does make a nicer presentation if you can make them flat. And just a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, just a little bit, and we'll take it over to the stove. How's that sound? Okay, now that we're at the stove, we're going to go ahead and lightly cook the bananas because we're going to serve it with ice cream. We have ice cream, don't we? We have vanilla ice cream? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, the other idea is you could get out that 151 again. Are you in the mood to flambe? So we're going to go ahead and just, it only takes about a few minutes to do this. Get it started to melt. Make sure we have nice flame. Roll them around. It's really low calorie, totally low calorie. Ready for the rum yet? Go for it. Let's see if we got enough power there to do anything. Woohoo! Now that's a nice glaze. And we'll see if Chris has our ice cream ready to go. And that's it. I guess we have our dinner now. You ready didn't? to eat yet? Yeah, I think it's ready. We're going to go ahead and dish it up. It smells really good. And we'll pour the excess. Ooh. Nothing like caramel. Then, you need ice cream. I'm not going to be cooperative today. 